This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. What is Chalkboard Chat? It's an MPB education podcast. It's a variety show providing information and resources for teachers, students, parents, guardians, and everyday people on various topics. It's learning something new with every publication. Chalkboard Chat. Find the podcast or listen from chalkboardchat.mpbonline.org. From MPB Think Radio, this is Now You're Talking. It's the show about the most interesting people and stories of Mississippi. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey, editor-at-large and cartoonist with Mississippi Today. Oh, my next guest well, needs no introduction, I guess. Why? Well, because it's me. That's right. Yeah, Jermaine uh, is going to be diving into who I am uh, from my childhood all the way to now. And she's going to try her best in to squeeze it all into an hour in an episode that we're calling uh, Who is Marshall Ramsey? Um, Jermaine, this is, is this going to be one of those uh, hostile 60-minute type interviews? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I've you had know, some iced coffee, too. I need to go eat some more of Kevin's cookies that are covered in powdered <laughs> sugar and so I can be prepared for this. I've had some iced coffee, too. This is going to be great. Okay. Well, this I'm honored. Is be great. I'm honored that you're going to be interviewed today. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually honored that I'm interviewing you, and I'm thankful for it. Coming off the hills of, of course, Thanksgiving, um, that I'm here with you and able to produce this beautiful show that you host. We have the, we have more fun on Mondays. We really do. No, <laughs> we it's really great. Do. Yeah, it's great. And I, like I said, I'm thankful for you. And I'm not just saying that because literally you can grill me for the next hour if you wanted to. But I am. I am. Because we, we do. We have a great time. And thank you for coming up with this idea today. I think it's going to be fun. Yeah, I think so, too. So let me go ahead. I'm just going to get started. I like, okay. the way, I like the way your face is looking right now. I'm That's because gonna... I don't have my glasses on. <laughs> That's why. That's why my, my face looks different. And you look great, too, because I don't have my glasses on. So right. there you go. That's perfect. Okay. Keep them off. <laughs> but I wanted to go ahead and introduce, of course, our host, Marshall Ramsey. He is the editor-at-large for Mississippi Today. It's a nonprofit news website. He's a two-time Pulitzer finalist. That's 2002 and 2006. He's a 2022 Southeastern Emmy winner and his work is nationally syndicated by Creator Syndicate. His cartoons have appeared in the New York Times, USA Today, and the Clarion Ledger. He's also authored several successful books, including three cartoon collections, two short story collections, Fried Chicken and Wine and Chainsaws and Casseroles, and the delightful children's book, Banjo's Dream. Ramsey's cartoons, photos, and stories and posts are frequently shared on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. He's also the host of the weekly statewide radio program that you're listening to right now. Now you're talking with Marsha Ramsey and the television radio in the television program Conversations on MPB. And he's appeared on Fox and Friends, Inside Edition, CBS and CBSN <laughs> and CNN Newsday. He's also a cancer survivor diagnosed with malignant melanoma in 2001. He's been honored by both the Melanoma Research Foundation and the American Cancer Society for paying his survival forward. He's actively promotes skin cancer awareness and sun safety through cartoons, speeches, skin screenings, and 5K race. He ran the Marine Corps Marathon to raise funds for melanoma research. He completed the race to raise $13,000 and develop some wicked leg cramps. His wife, Amy, their three sons, and the precocious dog, beautiful cutie pie, Pip, live right here in the state. And um, they're best. he's best known for his state politics, storyteller, sweet tea, and raising a family all right here in the state. So right now I'd like to welcome the host, Marshall Ramsey. Hi. Marshall, you, you, you're, 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 your accolades just expand your, your personality to me. Well, that's good, because if you read my bio a couple more times, we'll take up the whole hour. <laughs> I did that on purpose, too. You did. A little filler. Ripped it right off of your website. But, I mean, just being able to sit in front of you, like I tell you, when I, when I, when I book your show, when I call guests, they're literally like, yeah, I'll come and I'll, I'll do it because it's Marshall Ramsey. And that's the reason why right there. You know, a couple of weeks from now will be my 26th anniversary of living here, moving here. And... um you know, I'm not a Mississippian by birth. I'm one by choice. And I thought I'd be here for about two years. I moved here from San Diego, California. I'm from Atlanta originally. We'll touch on all that, I guess. Yeah. 
Uh, but I got a call from my former boss in Houston, Texas, uh, Conroe, Texas, named Dan Turner. And Dan lives here. He's from Philadelphia, Mississippi. And, and he called me up and he said, um, you would be perfect for the job in Jackson, Mississippi. Right. Because the cartoonist had left. And, and I said, the number you have reached has been disconnected. Because <laughs> I, I lived in San Diego. It was 74 degrees and sunny all the time. It was mm-hmm. fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, we really loved living out there. But... I, you know, cartooning jobs even then were hard. Now they're impossible to yeah. find. And it was a chance for us to get closer back to our families in Atlanta. So we took the role. That it was the most strange interview I'd ever taken in my life. I remember flying in and, you know, we're going over the reservoir, coming into the Jackson Airport, and it's dark. There's no lights. I got my little life vest on because I think we're going down into mm-hmm. the water. Lady tells me to stop. And they drive me all around and they go, there's UMC. There's a great, that's a great place to go if you're ever shot, you know. So it was not a Chamber of Commerce <laughs> moment, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but the but I fell in love with the people. Right. And, and, you know, for 25, 26 years, I've fallen, fallen in love with the people. It's been a great run. I mean, for 26 years, I think the people have fallen in love with you. Well, some of them, yeah. <laughs> I think even the ones who maybe want to say that they didn't, but they have. And so you've just become a part of people's lives here in Mississippi. When we, when we look at cartoons or, you know, uh, cartoons like what you do, I mean, that's all we know is Marshall Ramsey. And that's great. So yeah, I, I was young when I got here, <laughs> you know, no, I, was, I was just saying you're a part of our lives like a canker sore. You know, you just <laughs> pop up every once in a while and cause a lot of pain and then you go away. But you, know, you really do. You mark some great things that happen here in the state. You mark great things that happen nationally, of course, worldwide as well. So you're just a great cartoonist. Well, really it, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I got to say that, um, you know, think about Mississippi. I mean, we're just a land of storytellers. And we tell stories in different ways, whether, it's you know, Malcolm and Carol just on talking about telling stories with food yeah. or, you know, I mean, and you think about every one of the shows that we have here on MPB, you have a different type of storyteller, whether it's helping fix a car or helping, you know, with getting medical help or anything else. But we're great storytellers. And for me to be able to come here and be surrounded by some of the people, and that's one of the, the joys of when I got the show was the fact that I literally get to interview some of the most fascinating people, and they make me better. Let's and, and, talk about that. Yeah. I want to know one of your favorites, whether it be from Now You're Talking or Conversation. Angie Thomas. Why? Because Angie Thomas, number one, is one of the most real human beings you'll ever come across. Mm-hmm. And that's because Angie Thomas's mom is one of the coolest people you'll ever come across. I mean, she's just amazing, too. And she raised an incredible daughter. But but Angie has had incredible success, uh, you, you know, and rightfully so. As I mean, author. she literally caught a wave of what the whole, literally the whole country was going to be dealing with, with the reckoning that happened after George Floyd. And she was ahead of that curve with her fantastic mm-hmm. books. Mm-hmm. And so, but she has been so successful, but she is a true Mississippi treasure in the sense that her success has not changed who she is. Right. And and I just have loved that. But I mean, Jasmine Ward getting to interview her was fun. Uh, but I mean, you get Scott, Scott Albert Johnson who's come in and, and you think about a lot of them. And I love musicians. I love it when we have musicians on here because for them to get to a certain level of success means they've literally had to pour a lot of salt, you know, blood, sweat, tears, you name it to get where they are because it's a hard business to break mm-hmm. into. And so uh, my, my theory, at least on this show, is everybody has a great story. And I've just been uh, honored. And, and even on the cartooning front, you know, I make fun of people for a living. You know, that's right. what I do because <laughs> I'm, I'm basically a seventh grader. But, I mean, gosh, I mean, think about it. Somebody once told me, I remember when I was breaking into this field back in college back a million years ago, and they said, you're only as good as your governor. Oh, my gosh. I've had amazing governors to, to, to draw cartoons about and everything. I got here when Fordyce was governor. Of I mean, course. You know, Kirk Fordyce, who was absolutely bigger than life and, and really fun to draw cartoons about. So, I mean, yes. Um, and I'm not, you know, like I said, it's not even a question of being modest or anything else. It's just, I mean, I just am proud to be here and to be able to do what I do. Right. Of course, you know, I'm going to get into the whole governor talk because I want to talk about some of the cartoons that you did about our, our current governor, Tate Reeves. It's been... Um, I think if I had to look out there, it's been the majority of what you've been doing for the past couple of years. Well, and I, I mean, love it. Right. I love it. I love it all. But look, let's go back to one of my favorite interviews that just happened recently. Rob J. last week. Oh, Rob for was Thanksgiving. great. Yeah. 
If you have not heard that, you can actually go and check out that podcast with Rob J. Um, you can check it out after you get off the show with us today. But Rob J. and and you together were like putting the best of both worlds together, and y'all just y'all made magic for Thanksgiving week <laughs> to lead up into Thanksgiving. So I just enjoyed that one. Two of my favorite people, I put them together and it made such a great episode. And both of y'all in y'all's own rights have, have of course, made your mark here in the state. So that's my favorite. Well, I love Rob and, and, and I love Rob because Rob is a, a survivor of the media business, which is not easy to do, you know. Right. But also too, Rob's very comfortable being Rob. And it, so it's really fun to talk to him. And he's so quick witted that, you know, even though I'm, you know, I'm still concussed, I guess, because of my <laughs> concussion. But I mean, it was just so much fun trying to banter back and forth with him and, and talk about. But he's but he's interesting. And his stories about Dion and or Coach Prime, I guess it would be proper terminology. Right, right. But I mean, like I said, it was just fun. And, you know, that's the thing. And you love to to run into people like Rob and be able to have them on the show and to be able to do what they do. And he did a great job. Yeah. Let's go to the beginning. I want to know before all of this went down here in Mississippi, who you were and where you were from. So hailing from Marietta, Georgia, born and raised, right? I was raised there, yeah. You were raised. I think I was a little kid, but yeah. I did I hear you say Atlanta, so I was like, I no, wonder no. if he claims that, like how people. No, that's home. That that was home. This is home now because I've been here longer here than I, I was there. But I mean, yeah, that's where my parents are buried, and my sister still lives there, and right. my in-laws still are there. Right. Yeah. No, I mean ATL two eighty five. I go over every six months and renew my road rage license, you know, because right. it's insane. But you know, I was a little kid. Dad was a salesman. Mom was an art teacher, and Dad owned a car garage later on in life. Uh, we moved there, and I think Mom figured out pretty early on that giving me crayons in paper in church kept me quiet. <laughs> and so that was before they had church boldings for children. You know, I was kind of cutting edge back yeah, in the day. But yeah. she gave me kit, and then she, like, being an art teacher, she looked down, and she's like, well, this kid actually can kind of draw. And I wasn't like some savant. I mean, I can literally bring in – my mom saved everything. So I've literally got drawings from when wow. I was, like, three um, but you know, I, I saw, I had insight, you know, I was able to make one. And I remember walking up to my dad at eight and saying, I'm going to be an editorial cartoonist, which was the weirdest thing an eight year old could possibly tell <laughs> his father. <laughs> and my dad just looked at me and he said, and you're going to be the best one ever. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And well, you got to understand dad busts my chops all the time. Right. You know, we were sitting in Nayland stadium uh, cause he went to Tennessee. I went to Tennessee. Uh, I, I, that's right after I was a Pulitzer finalist the second time. And I said, I bet I'm the only two-time Pulitzer finalist in this whole stadium. And he looked over at me and he said, and I'm the only other person who cares. <laughs> so that, that was kind of how my dad rolled. So, you know. Um, he was proud of you for sure. <laughs> oh, no, no. He was very proud. But, but, you know, dad, I didn't live dad's dream. You know, I lived my dream. And he was there to make sure. And I, was, I'm, I try to do that with my kids. Because everybody said, do your kids draw? No. None of them do. Uh, but they're wildly creative and they're very creative in their own ways. And, um, you know, it's like my wife and I joke that our gene pool is Olympic size and um, they, they're pretty much from all different corners right. of the pool. But they're all amazing. And, you know, I was lucky that that was how I grew up. And I played football. I thought I was going to be a football star. And then I remember Pat died. Auburn told me I was too short yeah. to play football. And, uh, you know, I was about eight inches taller than him. And he played football. But I'm glad I chose the cartoon path. So editorial cartoonist, you knew since the age of eight you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. This had to be the most popular thing that you could have chosen to be in school. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, actually, the football helped more. Um, I, I, you know, my best friend can attest to this. You can't pick up a single person a, a date by drawing on a napkin. It does not work. Right. Trust me, I tried for years. It didn't. In fact, uh, when I met my wife, I was a high school janitor. So uh, if I'd have been a cartoonist, I don't even know that would have worked. So, so you were always as cool at eight as you are now. Uh, are you that or I'm just an eight year old now and you know, in a fifty four year old man's body. One of the two. So tell me about your adolescence coming up in school. Were you the popular kid? Were you the, the mm. non popular? Were you in the middle? No, actually I wasn't. Um, you know, and I and it was funny because I was bullied in sixth in seventh grade and then I grew eight inches and suddenly became six one by the yeah. time I was in eighth grade and the yeah. bullying mysteriously stopped. Uh, I started playing football at that point. Then I, you know, I became popular. I mean, everybody knew me in school and I knew every, but it was, I had friends all the way across the, the spectrum. Right. You know, and, and I still do. You know, I just think that life's way more interesting not to get into a click, you know. And so, right. but I had, a, I mean, I had great 
friends in high school, and, and it's fun now because one of them is a drummer for the Georgia Satellites, which is an 80s band, mm-hmm. and he's out doing that. i got another. It's a mayor of Cartersville, Georgia, that, another friend. and So it's kind of been fun to see how we've all turned. We go to the reunions. And we have the who has the most interesting job, and I usually lose, you know. And, and you would think I would have some <laughs> shot, you know. But no, it was it was great. I loved it. I, but I mean, I think all the things, and you know, people talk about therapy and you know what happened to you in your childhood and everything else, and even the bad stuff all kind of helped turn me into what I am. And mm-hmm. and you know, I can I always loved politics. I was very interested in that because I grew up in Georgia in the seventies and Jimmy Carter was president and my family is Republican and of course, you know, Carter was a Democrat. And so it was I remember reading the newspapers and seeing those cartoons and those papers and I want to do this really bad. Yeah. And and I did. I got to college, I did it and won the top cartooning award in college, you know, for college cartoonists. Let's in the talk nation. about college. Where did you choose to go? Uh, I went in 1980. Dad and I went to go see University of Georgia play Tennessee. It was Herschel Walker's first games when he ran over Bill Bates. Um, but I, that day I decided <laughs> I'm going to go to school here at Tennessee because mm-hmm. I really loved it. And so six years later, I got a scholarship and went to UT. And I remember the first week I was there, I went to go see my advisor and I said, I really want to be an editorial cartoonist. And she said, well, they already have one at the newspaper. So I walked downstairs and applied and beat the guy out and did it for five years. Wow! And that's how I learned how to do what I do. And so I had 13 different editors. One of my editors actually writes Star Wars and Star Trek novels, (laughs) which is really cool. I'm just so proud of him. He's really because he was writing editorials in college about Afghanistan. I'm like, Nobody cares about that, you know, <laughs> but he's uh, really successful now. I'm really proud of him. But no, it's how I, I developed my skill. And I was very fortunate that one day I came up to my uh, my head of teaching. Excuse me. I, I had to teach a class about speaking. <laughs> Obviously, I failed it because uh, I'm having a hard time doing that right now. But I had a, a speech teacher who made us go interview somebody who was doing what we wanted to do when we grew up. And so I went up to the local newspaper with, who had a cartoonist, and he took me in literally like a kid, like his kid, and fed me and took me to cartoonist conventions. And he's 91 years old, and mm. he's still my mentor. In fact, he'll be 92 in a few days. And uh, What's his name, Marshall? Charlie Daniel. Okay. Not Daniels. He's not the fiddle player. Charlie Daniel. He started in Knoxville in 1958 and got laid off at 90 from the Knoxville News Sentinel. Laid off at 90. <laughs> they, okay? had to, they, had like, to, they didn't want to fire him. Marshall. Yeah, they probably saw how much they're going to have to pay him in retirement. And they were probably like, oh, my gosh, it's going to be like literally in gold bullion. But he um, he literally uh, I stole his, how his work ethic. He always would do cartoons and never, you know, have somebody else in his spot. And But he let me fill in for him mm. and just absolutely an amazing guy. So, you know, one of the things I always people always like, well, my kid wants to be a cartoonist. Well, number one, find people that can be mentors. And I've, you know, I've helped tried to help kids along the way mm-hmm. over the years. But the main thing is just finding people that do what you do. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel because there was no path to be a cartoonist. That's what I was going to ask. So I was going to ask you, what does a cartoonist major in in college? Uh, a marketing, actually, in my case. Really? Uh, well, and I'll tell you why. I mean, I was in advertising and I was working at the school newspaper and they had a spelling, typing and grammar test and I could not pass the typing test. And it was going to mean I had to wait six months to take it again. Mm-hmm. And I was out of state student. So I was like, OK, I don't want to do this to my parents. Right. So one day I was sitting down with my dad and my dad said, uh, go get a marketing degree. I said, why? He said, well, there's people that can outdraw you. There's people who can outthink you. But if you can outsell them, you'll survive. Yeah. Good advice. Right. You know, and um, and I probably am probably and I'm not a great marketer. Don't get me wrong. But, you know, just having a sense of your worth and your mm-hmm. your work's worth. It was was such an important component to the business of what I do. Right. I, I wouldn't say that you're not a great marketer because you literally market your cartoons on a daily basis. They come out. I'm going to get into that on our next segment. Of course, I want to know all about like your whole your whole, you know, process of getting these out. But. I mean, marketing is your your strong suit, especially when it comes down to when you're going to put these things out, how you put them out, how many that you put out. I mean, you're your own your own best marketer. Well, I tell you, you know, I figured out that I've done over eight thousand cartoons, editorial cart, just editorial cartoons, mm-hmm. not including all the your coloring pips, sheets yeah. and all the other stuff I do, the books and everything else. I've done over eight thousand cartoons since I've been here, so. For instance, if you had to go run a marathon right now, you couldn't probably do it. 
But if you trained every day for like months and you've suddenly had to go run 26 miles, you could do it, you know, and, and creativity and being able to do, you know, coming up with ideas and everything. is just something that the more you and that's why I'm so fi- fascinated when we bring all these guests in, because I want to hear about their creative process because mm-hmm. I know how mine works. You know, I, I and, definitely want to know, you know, and so it's always interesting to hear how other people approach this whole vexing issue of trying to grab something out of the ether and bringing it down and put it down on paper because it's really hard to do sometimes Mm -hmm. fatigue is always and i'm always tired you know because i'm always going 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 and i've been that way 2010 the clarion ledger made me part-time and it just kind of put me in fight or flight mode because i had to survive right yeah so i mean i'm constantly having to go 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 and i think at some point i'm going to have to slow down a little bit but yeah the whole idea thing i mean like Dad said, there's people who can outdraw me. There's people who even can outthink me. But the one thing I can do is I can come up with an idea when the in between the towers falling down on 9-11. Yeah. I can come up with an idea when the winds are blowing during Katrina. I can come up with an idea when we're all forced in pandemic. You know, so that's that's my superpower. If if I have any anything that I'm good at is I can always come up with an idea. Right. We well we now we know your spinach. <laughs> Yeah, spinach. I'm not, wait a minute. Now we're starting to sound like Malcolm and Carol show. Well, we're talking about spinach here today. Right. Um, now you're talking. Before we get into more spinach talk and more cartoon talk. You're listening to Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey of Mississippi Today. And I'm Jermaine Flood asking the question, who is this man, Marshall Ramsey? <laughs> and we are back on Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. That may not be a question you want an answer to, to be honest with you. Who is this man, What Mama? is in this hot dog? What is in Vienna sausages? What is in potted meat product? Some of that stuff is scary when you look into oh, it, Marshall. No, it is, but it's delish, you know. So there you go. At the end of the day, it's the final product, not what goes into it, right? <laughs> Right. Some of that is a little scary when you look into it. Have you ever asked what was in South? I don't know if you've ever eaten South, but that was one of the things that reminded me of what's in it. You know, (laughs) I still have time on this earth, so maybe I'll have to just go try it today for lunch. Right, right. Don't think so. Sorry. I'm well past the trying new stuff. Well, I don't know. Every once in a while. I used to hate cucumbers. I eat cucumbers now. So oh, cucumbers go. are the best. No, they're all, they're like garbage. That. But, they're, you know, I, I just got sick of picking them out of the salad. Right. <laughs> Before we get into your cartoons, while we're talking about food, how was your Thanksgiving? Um, it was great. I had taquitos and um, an adult beverage. That was my that was my Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> that's 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 the new turkey taquitos. <laughs> well, there's actually m- maybe a little bit more of a backstory to that. Yeah, my kids were at the egg bowl, so we waited till the next day to have our Thanksgiving dinner. To eat, and for it was real. wonderful. To so. eat for real. Oh, I got to tell you this, and I I told you this uh, via text. So we went to a wedding last weekend. Um, my nephew got married to a wonderful young lady mm-hmm. whose dad apparently has a ton of money because they spent a bunch on this. Oh, it's a wedding. So we're sitting there, and it's at uh, Rosemary Beach in Florida. You know, really nice area. Yeah. This lady taps me on my back, and I'm going to turn around, and she goes, are you Marshall Ramsey? And I'm like, oh, somebody from Mississippi. Because we're in Florida. Most people are from Georgia. There's no yeah. way anybody would know who I was, right? And I said, yeah, why? And she said, you took me to the senior prom. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at her, and suddenly this 54-year-old woman turned into a 17-year-old. I'm like, oh, hi, Tammy. How are you? <laughs> yeah, my wife said, my wife said, sit here, look at this, watching it go down. Like, this is the funniest thing I've seen forever, watching so how I awkward it is. So turned into a 17-year-old for her. Well, no, she said, she kept saying, you haven't changed. You look exactly the same, which I don't. But, you know, I do drink formaldehyde, so I do look. <laughs> keep a little. I look a little, yeah. I had my... my you know, my cucumbers on my eyes. Right, you know. that you now eat. Uh, yeah, it was, it was surreal. Um, I had gone with, with her as a friend, so she wasn't like the love of my life or anything, but it was yeah. still, I was just like, okay, this is completely weird and out of context. And then she just disappeared. That's not, how Thanksgiving goes. Yeah, so it was just kind of weird. But no, uh, we managed to get through Thanksgiving without hating each other, so it worked out okay. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. We did no cooking, so that definitely kept the hate out of the room. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's really weird. It usually 
lights thing. If we're in our nuclear family, we're okay. If you start spreading out, you know, getting other family members in, then it can get a little bit tense. So, yeah, but. yeah. That's one thing we talked about this morning that I thought about, too, um, how tense it can get during holidays with families. Yeah, I feel like Dr. Buttress needs to be in the studio with us right now. <laughs> to help us out on that one. Yeah, give us some coping <laughs> techniques. It's always like somebody's birthday or something. Because you, 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 you think maybe the adult beverage might help, but it never does. Mm-mm. Never does. So, Especially if there's only one person partaking. Yes. <laughs> Uncle Fred. Right. <laughs> when it's Uncle he wants Fred. to tell you what he just heard on the TV about the latest in politics. <laughs> right. That is just great. I'm glad somebody actually noticed you a state away. I know. I felt famous for a moment. Yeah. You, but it was just for my 17-year-old me or 18-year-old me. You are. I mean, she knew of Marsha Ramsey. She probably knows that you are now a, a famous editorial Oh, I told her. Partner. Of course. I told her how famous I was just so she could figure it out. I think she already knew, Marsha. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think she already knew. Look, I want to get into your process of of cartooning. Mm-hmm. Um, when it comes down to it, I want to talk about what you because I know you've got you've got your medium now. Um, what is your favorite medium? Pen to paper or stylus to pad? Well, because I do other things now, um, I have less time. It, it was it was interesting yesterday. I had to do. Well, I didn't have to do. I, I just chose to do several drawings that were actually pen and ink, which I don't do. I, for the first 22 years of being a cartoonist here in Mississippi, I drew pen pen and ink. Right. You know, and so when I moved over to Mississippi today, I am their editor at large, and I do a lot of different things for them. And so um, I my time during the day kind of got compressed. Mm-hmm. And instead of having a big drawing table now, I have an iPad with a pencil. But I've discovered with this thing that I can actually paint with it and so I do paintings and I do um, you know cartoons I can do illust- I can do all kinds of cool things with this thing that I never could do and it also cuts the time down from hours down to a couple hours right yeah. so it's great so that's I like the iPad the only problem is you don't have an original so it's a little different beast yeah. on that but um yeah it's just you know and I find that drawing painting is more relaxing than actually drawing cuz drawings work but my process is I read the news mm-hmm. and reading helps more than like listening to it or watching it because you're engaging your brain more when you read. And then I just start sketching ideas and usually we'll give my editor maybe 10 ideas, you know, and he'll yeah. pick two or three of them and we'll go from there. So, yeah. so, and, and most of my ideas are pretty much, I'm not going to give him an idea that's bad because mm-hmm. I know he'll pick it. <laughs> you know, that always happens. All the worst If ones. you have the worst one, they're going to pick it. And you're just going to like, oh, God, you know, no, no, no. Um, I've been incredibly blessed. And like I said, any success I've ever had in my career has been because I've worked with incredibly good people. Right. And, and I've just honestly, I am a total reflection of the people. I mean, I had David Hampton as my ed- editorial page editor for 15 years at the Coin Ledger. Uh, I tell people that's why I'm a two-time Pulitzer finalist because he pushed me and made me really good. Yeah, uh, he didn't care. He didn't necessarily agree with me on necessarily the idea, but he knew when I was not doing my best, and he pushed me hard. And, right. and I appreciate that. And I just, I've been very blessed to work around great journalists and great people since I've been here in Mississippi. I don't think Mississippians realize how fortunate we are to have some of the talented people that we have running around mm-hmm, the state. Mm-hmm. What's the process when it comes down to picking the topic that you're and, and aside from, I guess, when you're when you're submitting these um, to your boss, how how do you go about picking the topic? Do you just sit down all day, literally take in media and write a list? How does that work? No, it's a, number one has to be something I care about. A lot of the cartoons you see in Mississippi today that I do now are state politics based. And so that's just kind of the nature. We, we're very local. We cover the state of Mississippi. Mm-hmm. And so that's what the, I do national cartoons that I send off to the syndicate. I still do that. But so my buoys have been kind of narrowed a little bit on what I draw about, but I still do stuff like, you know, the egg bowl and stuff like that. Yeah. But um, it has to be something I care about. I can't just manufacture outrage or, you know, caring about something I don't care about. So, but uh, that's usually pretty not a hard thing. I mean, I always tell people I have a crack team of comedy writers that work at the Capitol. You know, no, and I love my friends down at the legislature. <laughs> and I'm not, but I'm just saying, you know, literally you can turn on the news and there's something that's cartoon worthy within three but minutes. That's what I'm wondering. So, do you voice memo that? Do you write that down? No. How do you how do you mm-hmm. keep that in your brain and know? Okay. I'm, this is what I'm laying down. Jermaine, you, you and I have worked long together long <laughs> enough to know that I don't keep anything in my brain. Okay, it just kind of 
<laughs> yeah, that was after you had hit your head, Marshall. I know. Well, that was before I hit my head, too. I got to tell you, uh, literally, I do it usually about the same time every day, and I just do it because I don't I don't wake up in the middle of the night going, Shazam, there's an idea. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't do that. I'm just not that person, mm-hmm. although I do have dreams sometimes. It was really weird. I really got into the stint of writing short stories for a while and was able to do a couple books based on it. And I would literally picture a scene. And then that was one of those cases where I would literally sit down and start writing. Right. You know, because I didn't want to lose it. Uh, but now the cartoons, generally the better ones pop up in my head already drawn. So all I have to do is just put it out on the paper. Yeah. The ones I have to work at usually aren't as good. Um, but it's it's weird. I mean, not every day is an easy day. Some days you're just, you know, it's a God thing. You're given the Barbara Bush cartoon, which is arguably probably the most famous cartoon I've done. I've yeah. done a bunch of them that have gotten some a, a degree of acclaim, right. but that one was insane. I mean, I literally sitting on a stage with Jenna Bush Hager talking to her about, about it. About you know? the cartoon. Yeah. So, I mean, it was, and it's, those are now hanging in the George H.W. Bush library. The two cartoons I did on them. Right. So, I mean, presidential library. That's so, awesome. Yeah. So it's, I mean, but those two were, those were God moments. You that's know, those, awesome. I mean, you know. Oh, you've had so many more God moments. And I know you don't approach this knowing, okay, this is going to be that moment. But let's just talk about 2022, just in a small capsule when it comes down to your cartoon work. You've had Betty White, Queen Elizabeth, Loretta Lynn and Sidney Poitier this year. And they literally went viral. I mean, literal viral. How do you, one, sit back and take that in when it happens? And then two, um, not get the big head about it. <laughs> well, I mean, it's funny because some people are like, they make fun of me because they're like, oh, that's all he knows how to do is do, you know. And I've always joked that I'll just quit and go work for a funeral home and charge people $10,000 to put Uncle Bob in heaven, you know, because well, Uncle Bob isn't going to go to heaven. You know, you know, my dad was that person. Well, so. no, he, he put them in the ground. <laughs> well, yeah, that too. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm talking like express sending them on, you know. Yeah. I don't know, you know, and I don't do it every, on every person and, um, but Barbara Bush, and I'll tell you what, how that idea came about. My mom had just died of COPD, so and Barbara okay. Bush had it. So when they said that, you know, they were taking her off of life support or off of treatment, that just meant to me, okay, they're making her comfortable. She's about to die. Mm-hmm. And so I started mm-hmm. thinking about her life, and here she had everything. I mean, Barbara Bush had everything yeah. in her life. She was filthy rich. Her husband was a president. Her son's a president. Her son's a governor. His granddaughter's on the Today Show. I mean, the Bush family... They're, they're very successful people. Yeah. She had her own platform. I mean, she had pearls. She had everything. But she had suffered the worst thing that any parent could suffer. Mm-hmm. She'd lost a child. Yeah. They lost their daughter, Robin, uh, to leukemia in the 50s. And as you can imagine, there was not good treatment for it. So here we were, you know, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, she's whole now. Mm-hmm. Okay. She's being greeted by her daughter. Everything's good. No other cartoon has thought of it. And I was talking to Jenna later about it. She said that um, when I thought, and we figured out on the time when I thought of it, that her dad was sitting there at her mom's bedside talking about Robin. So this was something that meant a lot to the family. Yeah. And so I managed to catch Mm -hmm. lightning in a bottle. And so um, it ended up, Jenna put it on her Instagram. It was on the Today Show. Next thing you know, I'm on CNN. It was just, it was just an insane thing. They even used the cartoon, showed it during their, her funeral. Yeah. So it was, um, but, but what's so beautiful about it, and I think this is something all of us need to remember, is that we're all artists in our own way, mm-hmm. and that we all wake up with that blank canvas every day. The fact that I was, I start hearing from parents who'd lost children, mm-hmm. and they're like, your cartoon meant so much to me. And let me tell you about my child. Right. And I'd sit and listen. Over a thousand people, a thousand people emailed me, stopped me in the grocery store. And it didn't matter where, because they said how much that cartoon brought them hope. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I've done 8,000 cartoons. I had two that I caught lightning in a bottle like that, you yeah. know? So, um, and like I said, you, you've been very kind with your questions and with, with <laughs> assigning my place in Mississippi. You know, I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm Marshall Ramsey dad. You know, I'm Pips. Yeah. I'm literally the oh, person. We're, we're going to get to Pip. Oh, my God. That we're dog gonna drives me daddy. nuts. We're yeah. going to get to Pip. We're going to get to daddy. We're going to get to husband. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. definitely this cartoon is an emotion evoker. Um, when you're talking about the Barbara Bush cartoon, I mean, she, her daughter is literally running up to her saying mama. Yeah. And then she's hollering out, Rob. You know, the mama was a late last minute addition. And the reason I added it, because I haven't been to heaven and some people don't think I'm going there. Oh, Marshall, um, you will. I know. But, it, I, you know, <laughs> I always draw it with clouds. I hope they're in clouds because those are cold and wet. But, yeah. 
Um, I just like, well, would she recognize her mom? Because her mom didn't have white hair and pearls back then. And I don't know. How, I mean, like I said, I'm sure somebody can call in right now and explain the theology to the whole thing. But yeah. anyway, so I added the mama there. And I think that added actually a nice touch. Yeah, I love it, too. I think it's amazing. Um, I think all of the stuff that you do is amazing. When it came down to the the Queen Elizabeth and Loretta Lynn, the play on the queen of country and the yeah. queen of a country, I just think you're just you're just genius, and not to boost you up any more than your head. I'm about to say uh, you're gonna have to cut a hole in the <laughs> jaws of life to get me out of the studio. <laughs> if I could get into your brain and figure out how and why and what you do this all for, I would I would love to. One, this is one thing that I would love to do, and I don't know if anybody out there has has noticed. Pip has an Instagram. We'll get to Pip uh, for real as the as the dog of the family, the baby of the family. But Pip has an Instagram. Pip also has coloring sheets and I really wanted to print out a whole bunch of pip coloring sheets and color them and put them <laughs> in a book and I promise you I'm going to do that but tell me about the inspiration about when you chose to say okay pip it's your turn you're up to bat baby and then it just flew off from there well when we start had to pay for her her medicine <laughs> you know when she gets to be 10 and gets cushing that so. baby is paying for her own <laughs> health insurance. Well, no, and it's, it's not, I'm doing those coloring sheets for free, so it's not like I'm getting a ton of money off of her, but, you know, I joked about Banjo, because I did the Banjo's Dream children's book back 10 years ago, based yeah. on him. He had diabetes, and, you know, it was... That's the alligator. No, that's the dog that does not have the bow. Oh, okay. That's Banjo. Okay. Banjo's the original. He was the original uh, dog in the cartooning world, and then when he died, we got a call from the person. I mean, I called the lady that we got Banjo from, and she cried. And she said, my friend just had a litter of puppies. And I said, you have a very talented friend. She said, no, <laughs> his dog had puppies. And come to find out, Pip was born at the same exact oh. moment Banjo died. I mean, literally, one left, one came in, yeah. same time. So we got yeah. Pip, and I thought, oh, she's got Banjo's soul. No. No, she's she psychotic. No, that baby is not. She she bosses me around. My <laughs> wife makes fun of it. I was like, well, you do it too. So I mean, what's the deal? I'm just kidding, Amy. I know you just heard that because I have a chip in my neck that broadcasts everything. But um, yeah, no, no. Pip was, um, yeah. She, and she was, because between the pandemic and being at home and then having back surgery, um, she was there for me. You know, she was yeah. great. She was a good support dog. Yeah. And now she gets her own Instagram and her own cartoon. And now she's, she's done really famous. well. on Yeah, she's done well on Twitter. She's got like 6,000 followers she's on famous. Twitter. She's yeah. famous on Facebook. We just saw her get a bath yesterday or was it the day before and sit days ago. on the couch. She did. Yeah, and, she's and vindictive. <laughs> what kind of dog is she, Marshall? She is a border terrier. And how old is she? She is 10. Just adorable. I just, yeah. And everybody thinks she's a, a guy because <laughs> she has a beard and mustache. Pip so. is a real human being. <laughs> yeah, she is. She's got she's got all kinds of issues. Before we go to break, how many, I, I you know, I could keep you all day about talking about your cartoons. Mm -hmm. How many cartoon pieces do you think you hammer out within a day, maybe a week? Uh, I do seven, six to seven a week because I do a newsletter through Mississippi Today, which you know, folks, if you hadn't signed up for it, it's great. It ends up in your email box every Sunday. Right. You get all my cartoons with a column and all that. So end of ad. About six to seven. A week. Okay, so that's like one a, a day. Yeah. That's like one a day. I'll do at least one a day. Sometimes I do more. And it, it just comes naturally. You don't have to sit down and force it. Right. That's right. Great. The only time it's really hard is like it'll be tough today because I took the week off. Although I did about 10 drawings last week. So yeah. I mean, I was pretty busy, but I didn't do editorial cartoons. Right, right, right. So I love it. I yeah. love it. No, I, I've generally. I'm a parable of the talent guy. I feel like that if you have given one or two talents and if you keep working at it, you know, you'll get more and you keep, you know, that's part of why you're alive is if you've been given a gift, use it. Right. Well, I want to learn more about your gift. And then after that, we're going to talk about Pip. We're going to talk about your family. We're going to talk about hopes and dreams for you. Okay. In the future. So. All right. You're listening to Now You're Talking on MPB Think Radio. I'm your host, Marshall Ramsey of Mississippi Today. And I am Jermaine Flood. And before the break, we were talking to that man over there who just introduced himself. Santa Claus. <laughs> yeah. We talked about his early life. We've spoken about his cartoon life. We've talked about some Thanksgiving things. This is a great episode, Marshall. Well, I like, thank you. I love figuring out you. <laughs> no good. If you figure it out, let me know because I paid a lot of money to psychiatrists and they they're still they stumped. haven't done it oh, yet. They're completely stumped. I don't believe it. I believe you're an open book, literally. <laughs> no, I do over overshare on Facebook. Yes, I know that you put it out there. Hey, and you know what?
what? You're also related to somebody famous, Dave Ramsey. That's right. He was my dad. <laughs> oh, no, no. You're talking about my cousin. Yeah, the one on the radio. Yeah. Yeah, cousin Dave. I'm very Dave. proud of him. He's done. He's um, At least he hasn't tried to become a cartoonist yet. So yeah. Since I'm doing radio, yeah, he might thing. he he might take off if he if he I think he's going to be okay. I think he can probably <laughs> not have to be eating rice and beans and beans and rice. I think he's <laughs> probably past the point where he's financially solid. Oh yeah, I believe that. Did yeah. y'all play coming up like cousins? He get was together? eight years older than me. He's, oh. he's the same age as I mean, I had, so he had a sister. I've got two older sisters. They were the same age. I was the the one that they would ditch. You know, when the grandparents <laughs> yeah. would take us on trips. You know, because yeah. I was the annoying little Yeah, they were driving cousin. and you had not quite hit 10 yet. I was eight and they were 16, <laughs> so I was incredibly not cool, you know, so. And it probably still am not cool. Right, But, right. I, you know, I, I did some work with him early on and, and um, you know, he's great. I mean, like I said, I, you know, I drop him an email every once in a while and we talk and a little bit. So I'm proud of him. He's, he helps people. And I think at the end of the day, um, and that's one of the things I always love about MPB is I feel like all of our shows – uh, maybe not this one today, but most of them help people in some way. And so it is, um, you know, I think that at the end of the day, it's just nice to see public service radio. Right, right. Yeah. You help people. This this episode will definitely help people learn more about you, too. So I just think it's great. I think you're amazing. OK, let's talk about what else is amazing in your life. Your family. Oh, yeah. Your wife, your three kids and Pip. I yes. Mean, Pip is definitely going to be the talk of the town. But when it comes down to um, how much impact that they've had on you as a professional and as a human being, what is that like? It, you know, well, number one, I mean, I've always uh, I, it, there got to be a point where I would share a little bit about my family on Facebook and stuff. And really, at the end of the day, the boys are like, Dad, don't put that pressure on us. So I don't generally bring them out too much in the public, but they all are very gifted. And, you know, I mean, so my oldest son, he now works for the government uh, up in Huntsville. He's got a great job up there. Mm -hmm. My, he just graduated from college with honors and, you know, we didn't have to pay a dime for him. He went through on scholarship, just really smart young man. My middle son is now in college and he uh, is better on the radio than I am. Mm. Uh, he's, he was like podcaster of the year in high school. Okay. You know, so he was very, very talented. Uh, in the media side, but he's also doing public policy and so forth. So yeah. very smart kid, too. And my youngest one's in high school and in the band and just the apple of my eye. I love that kid. Aww. You know, Amy met me, you know, literally um, when I when I graduated from college, I couldn't find a job anywhere, which is not unusual. Uh, particularly, it was 91. The, the economy was terrible. Mm -hmm. So I ended up being a high school janitor at Pope High School in Marietta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And I worked with a lady named Maggie who says her husband was an Eastern pilot and lost his job because of the strike. And so she had to go work as a custodian also to keep the family going. I really had a lot of respect for Maggie. And one day she came up to me and she said, how would you like to go out with my daughter? And I said, well, <laughs> your standards for your daughter are incredibly low. It's not like I'm going to be a doctor, <laughs> but sure. But um, you had the keys to every room, though, Marshall. Uh, it was one master key. <laughs> oh. uh, and, I, and actually, I wasn't a high enough janitor to have many keys. So I was I was pretty low on the totem pole. But, uh, you know, like I said, I went out with the daughter and I've been married to her for nearly 30 years. So um, and I always tell people that Amy just thought I'd clean the house. You know, I think that. But, you know, the, the thing that's so refreshing, <laughs> and like I said, anybody's been married for 30 years, you know, you, you're going to have a marriage and, and marriages. And I could give marital advice like basically don't ever base your marriage on somebody else's. That, mm -hmm. That'd be my first rule. Mm -hmm. Number two is um, don't be a jerk. And, you know, I probably have been, you know, my ego probably did get out of the way, yeah. in the way, along the way. But Amy's one of the most grounded people, and she's the best teacher that I've ever come across. And no offense to my sister, who's a fantastic teacher, and my mom, who was a great teacher. But, I mean, Amy is really good. She could teach a penguin to fly. And it's just she is one of the most solid people, and it was just a perfect and I knew I, when I dated her, I said, you're going to be a great mom. You're going to be a great oh. teacher. And she's been both. So yeah, how, she's great. How, how great was she as a rock for you when you were going through your cancer diagnosis? It was really tough because we had a toddler at that time. So it was like we were very busy uh, on that. And she was. She was. I mean, she was there for me, but she was also incredibly bus busy with our oldest child, too, who was right. at, at the time was a baby. And so um, she was. But she was also, and, and I was like, how good a rock was I at the time for her when she needed somebody with the baby? And probably not as good as I should have been. So, you know, I, that's a tough time. But yeah, no, right. but I'll see this when I had spinal surgery back last year. I mean, 
she was great. And, and there was a lot of very uncomfortable things that they talk about for better or worse. They were the worst parts that she had to help me with. And there was a, a point about a week and a half into it. I couldn't get to my pain meds. It was like the middle of the night. She was passed out on the couch, tired. And I figured out how to get out of the chair by myself that night because I felt like she deserved to have me be my best to be able to take care. And that's just that's kind of the way I view Amy. I mean, you know, right. Amy will do anything in the world for the boys. She'll do anything in the world for me. She will keep things going. She's one of the most solid people I've ever met. But, you know, I need to make sure I'm doing that for her, too. Right, right. Amy, we love her. I love Amy. Yeah, no, she's very... Um, yeah, she and I laugh at the same things. So, and most of it's very unfortunate. Though what so we're laughing adorable. at. So, now let's talk about the last child again. Yeah, Pip. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. I'm sorry. I love Pip. People talk about Pip in the hallway. Pip is amazing. Oh no, no. Pip is. Um, <laughs> it was really weird because you know, I mean, I was writing for an old male dog with banjo, and you know, I was trying to create a personality for Pip, but she was so. Um, I mean, she literally wants to. Everybody's like, "My puppy would love to meet Pip." No, no, Pip. <laughs> Pip will try to eat your dog because she's like, is totally it befuddles her that there are other dogs on this planet. So, <laughs> too funny. She is a terrier. Too funny. What's yeah. on the horizon for you um, when it comes down to some of the projects that you have coming up, maybe next year? You know, I mean, obviously, I'm going to pour a lot of energy and resources into my, my day job with Mississippi Today. I want to make sure that I'm a, a very good editor at large and get out to promote the great coverage that they do. Um, I, if you hadn't noticed, the, the news reporting has been fantastic. There's a couple possible book projects that I'll be doing. Um, you know, and I'm very careful about what I do yeah. on the side because I don't have a lot of time. Yeah. But um, when we did the book festival, there was a couple of – folks that were authors that we interviewed here on the show and one of them's book was a Pulitzer finalist and so I'm a Pulitzer finalist and so we've we've talked about doing possibly a graphic novel together on that so that's still up and I mean that's in the, when there's a couple other books too that I'm going to be working on right so. what's the legacy you want to leave you know when I interviewed Robert Kayat the great former chancellor at Ole Miss and whose dad was one of the most infamous or famous um, county commissioners in the state history. I asked him about his dad. I said, what, what are your thoughts about your dad? And he said, he was a public figure. And at the end of the day, and I think that's going to be what I really work hard at in the future, is to make sure that when I die, that my children don't look at me and say, he was a public figure. Because, I mean, all this has been great. All this great stuff we've been talking about today has been fantastic. And, I mean, I love what I do. I am so blessed and I don't mean that in a syrupy way. I'm so blessed that I get to do what I love to do. I love coming in here and do this every Monday. But at the end of the day, my children, and that's where your legacy is. I, I did a TED Talk about how to change Jackson in 200 years. Right. I have no idea. But what you can do is change the world around you for the better. And then that's how you change generations to come. So That's this would be great. great. Thank you so much for letting me Pen do this today. Pen and cherry on top. We want to thank you for listening and thank our guest and host, editorial cartoonist Marshall Ramsey, for joining us today and every Monday. If you'd like to hear this show again or any past episodes, you can listen to our podcast on your favorite podcast app or MPB Public Media app. This is a production of MPB Think Radio and produced by me, Jermaine Flood. And join us next week at 10 for another great conversation right here on MPB Think Radio. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand.